Professor Rajiva Vijay Singh, good morning. It's a morning. pleasure for me to have you, Rajiva, for many reasons. Let me give you a very brief introduction. Maybe you have forgotten as well about our contact. You were my first employer. I don't know whether you yes, remember. No, of course I remember you were a cat. <laughs> I was a cat. See, the, the amazing thing was this. I was... You better say what that means. It sounds... So I will, strange. I will. The, the cat, yes. Uh, I was just finishing school or maybe in the final year. And I sent a short story to a collection edited by you. Because during these days, like those times was 1988, there were many anthologies being produced. Not many, but a few very good ones. And one was the New Lankan Review, which you were editing. And then, like when you, as a schoolgirl, when you send a short story, you just, it's like throwing it down a well. You never think it's going to come up. You know, the envelope is going to fly back. But I got a letter from the editor. This is amazing. Handwritten letter, which from you, you, you hadn't known me at all, who I was. And you had said, thank you for sending it. You write very well. And then this amazing question, would you, would you be interested in a job at the British Council, which you know needs a good writer? And for a school girl to hear that Rajiva was to suddenly feel that, oh my goodness, you have something that you can call talent. I was published in the school magazine. But so, I mean, that was my first step, but you were the first outsider who as an editor wrote back to a school child and said, do you want a job if you're just going out of school? I think I must have said that in the covering letter. And then I did come and you were the director of arts. Was that the position, Rajiv? It's called cultural affairs officer. That's cultural affairs office, you were the director. And I think Anmali was at, in a break during that time. And no, you, no, she, she was the assistant, she was the deputy. Yes, but she was at that time on a break because I don't remember seeing her till she came back. Really? We right. have, yes. Really so, um, and I was a cultural affairs trainee for some time. And that was so, it felt good, you know, to be given um, employment and we were paid a stipend. I met some of my most long standing friends there. For example, Prasanna Lienage, who designed my house. Yes. Was another, yes. Was another trainee? Time. Yes. Absolutely. And they became lifelong friends, Rajiva. With you, I lost contact for a long time. But then at the beginning, I saw the way you worked to spread English around the country, Rajiva. And that may have inspired me even to do what I'm doing now. Well, I'm very glad. No, because, you know, then you got me involved in um, your English teaching activities. And I was straight out of school. I had no particular desire to do anything except be a writer. And that's such a amorphous thing to do. But I saw you and Auntie Ranmali, Nirmali, you know, Nirmali Hetiarachi. You were involved in many things to bring English to the village children. There was a course called GELT. Was GELT something that you started, Rajiv, or you were simply involved in? No, no, no. What happened really? I suppose my approach in the 80s was threefold. I mean, one was, of course, expanding the cultural program at the British Council. And I was just enormously lucky to have ex extremely intelligent bosses who gave me my head. You know. And, uh, you know, later I had to deal, as so many people have to do, too, with people who, you know, resent capacity in their, you know, in their subordinates. But Rex Baker, I mean, I remember his wife telling me, Rex says you're far too qualified for this job. But he knew how to use me, which meant he let me do what I like with the occasional bit of advice and warning. So we started by doing a lot of programs at the council to encourage living literature. It was a horrible days when, except in one or two schools, and I think yours was one of them, literature was taught, taught by rote learning. And we brought it alive. And I also introduced a lot of Sri Lankan literature for people to understand and appreciate because that was just banned by the universities. You know, you're probably not aware, but you know, when we had a number of remarkably good writers emerging in the 70s, I was not here, I was in the state of the time abroad. You know, people like Punya Kanti Vijanayaka, uh, James Gunawardana, Gina Sinayaka began to write. And they were just scorned, just scorned by the English literary establishment. 
they were not banned though rajiva right they were just not regarded as no, 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 enough no banning didn't happen in those days yes. <laughs> right but they were denigrated you know not rajishri wardhan was a remarkably open mind and he actually prescribed james gunn wardhan for the text they produced an excellent book called reading is understanding but you know when i got back i found that the establishment hated reg you know they thought that he was trying to do down english literature how can you have a syllabus without shakespeare and uh, the, the both uh, the universities just ruthlessly attacked them you know they said james couldn't write good english uh, the colombo university ladies attacked punya kanti and you know didn't like gire at all gire is one of the great sri lankan novels in english and they sort of said you know she should she's much better writing about village life you know the waiting earth which you probably know which is a classic village well story romanticized it's not a bad book but it's nothing like you know her later work and you know i had a uphill struggle to get this going they were not on the syllabuses uh they were removed from the advanced level syllabus when reji was got rid of and the kalanya lot took over and uh, the wonderful kalanya syllabus which had no work by any living english writer except a man called alan silito and you know it started with you know 15th century poetry about gardens in the face you know cherry ripe cherries in girls cheeks and so on can you imagine and this was a sort of situation we had and i had a frankly a lone battle so that was one thing literature and i started the new lankan review which was in fact i think the only regular magazine never still would appear in the english association but it was a lot of critical work as well there was some great writing sad the yasmin gunrat who was also a great pioneer I gone off to Australia, so that was one thing. But then, you know, my background with literature, I had the most wonderful deputy boss, John Keller. Rajiv, just to just to cut, what was your degree in? You, I know you studied at Oxford. What did you study, Rajiv? My my first degree was in classics. It was a wonderful course, classical literature, ancient history, and ancient and modern philosophy. You know, it was called great because it really introduced you to everything. So you know. For instance, when I took up politics, and uh, you know, people said he's an amateur. I, you know, political writing was one of my subjects. Education was one of the things I wrote an essay for, because actually, frankly, it was in nineteenth-century England that education became a mass product. Before that, education was only for the elite, and I appreciated what was happening there. Universities, you know, Oxford was. not an academic place until it changed in the 19th century so i understood a lot of social developments it was a great course but then i went on to do um the equivalent of a masters in english they let me change in fact i got a studentship to fund this because i don't think anyone applied it was uh, you know i got it because it's quite prestigious but uh, much it sounds grander than it was because it was for people who did classics to read english and i don't think anyone else applied and then they allowed me to expand it to a doctorate so my doctorate was in english literature but my first degree was not but of course when i came back and started teaching at peradenia the victorians which i knew about were monopolized by the older people who taught all the nice so stuff you started with a ba and finished at phd level great thing i would take eight, eight years to finish up with okay great Thank pity you. because as a university person i could never get phd study leave to do any further degree <laughs> but in peru then yeah the lovely stuff was taught by i mean a good lecturer actually it was a marvel but uh, there was a rather boring man who used to almost dictate notes about dickens and actually told me you have to teach a lot of things you don't really know because don't forget i hadn't done english literature as a course and he gave me some stuff which i really enjoyed kipling paul scott conrad who i did a lot of research on in those days and so um but as i said that was one battle but then john keller had got me involved in english uh through a furniture project actually but who is john keller he was a deputy representative of the british council who was in charge of education and he 
uh, they had an education officer, but in a restructuring, they actually abolished her post and said, I should do both culture and education as deputy to John. But then they also, I mean, John and Rex Baker were marvelous. They realized I was taking on a lot. So they allowed me to have a full time assistant who was run with, who was just one of the most reliable, able people I, I, I knew and helped me a lot with the cultural activity at the council. She wasn't that interested in uh, English teaching, but it meant I could leave a lot of stuff with her. And then uh, she and I devised this scheme of getting young people for three months to help us. And you were one of them. They were wonderful. Vinelli Fernando, who is now at uh, Jawadnapur and also a fantastic teacher. Uh, Prasad, Prasad, Rinali was the first, no? Rinali was the first. Sorry? Rinali, Rinali was the first. Rinali was our first cat. Yes. Rajiv, how, how did you... And then Rinali... Neluka Silva. Yes. Neluka Silva, who was head of English at... Neluka Silva, who's head of English Professor. at Columbia. Professor Neluka yeah. Silva. So I, yes. I really had the most wonderful collection of cats. And I used to yes. say, I don't know whether you know, there's an English saying, all my geese are swans. And I said, all my cats are swans. Because they were really wonderful. Yes. Like no, just to thank you. Um, how did you get from campus to British Council? Let's just do that personal thing also. Now you finished an Oxford PhD and came back. And that what was your next step? Well, I taught at Peradenia. Yes. But then I resigned for political reasons because I was really upset at how undemocratic the Jaya Jaya the government was. And the first step was when they took away Mrs. Dandranaka's civic rights. I thought I've got to do something. And I remember many people saying, you know, you're very silly because Mrs. Bandranak was a terrible prime minister, which wasn't the case. She was actually a very remarkable, honest, honorable woman. Very. Rajiva, you're getting blocked. So I'm going to wait till you actually come back. Because uh, one thing, uh, you can join when your internet is normal again. One thing about you, if you hear me, is the various fields in Sri Lanka that you touch. Now, my experience with you is mainly as what you did for English. But I know you were, I mean, you were a founder member of a political party and you were also very much involved in actively trying to change the educational field. Rajiva, do you want to um, come back to this? Because you're completely stuck right now. Maybe we should take this in two parts because I think there's a problem with your um, program. So I will get back to you, Rajiva.